Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when Jesus calls us to follow him like he called Simon and Andrew, like he called James and John, we must first stop and think, what kind of Jesus are we following? Too often, it is a Jesus of our own making, a Jesus that we would want to follow as opposed to the Jesus that we need to follow. Sometimes we might see Jesus as a sort of insurance agent or a financial planner, a Jesus who gives us a security in case something happens, a Jesus who is more of a long-term investment and will someday be of benefit to us. But this Jesus often is detached from the here and now, from the present and current need of our souls. Jesus, that is revealed to us today, the Jesus that is revealed in all three of our readings, really, is less like a long-term insurance agent and more like an emergency medical worker. Jesus works in triage. As Mark writes his gospel, it seems like everything is happening with immediacy and urgency. Not a lot of time for thinking. There's very little talking. There is just action. Just do it. No time for planning. Just do. All three readings today give us this urgency of the gospel's call. A call from destruction to being spared. A call from the things of this world to the things of heaven. A call from a fishing boat to what we call the holy ark of the Christian church. This is the gospel of God. There isn't any time for self-help, for life coaching, and long-term advising. From Jonah, to John the Baptist, and even to Jesus himself, we see preaching a message of urgent repentance, an urgent gospel, turning from this world, and an urgent turning toward God. This urgency that is preached seems to drive kings to call an entire city to, to repentance. The Holy Spirit works faith in the hearts of the Ninevites, despite Jonah's half-hearted efforts. The king of Nineveh has hope and faith that if they would just turn from their ways, perhaps God will be gracious and he will turn as well. Perhaps God will turn from his wrath and destruction. Perhaps God will overlook their sin or forgive it. Perhaps God will repent, because that is what the word repent means, to turn from our ways. God says very clearly to the Ninevites, my way is a way of destruction. My way is a way of wrath. I am going to destroy Nineveh. And then God turns, because they turned, because they repented, so also God relented or repented from his plan. This is what the king of Nineveh hopes, that God will turn, and certainly he does. The urgency of the gospel causes men to turn from their ways. The urgency of the gospel causes men, like those four disciples in our reading, to leave their nets, that is, to leave their livelihood, their business, and even in James and John's case, they leave their own father in order to follow Jesus. And this is important because the kingdom of God is at hand. Now this leaving behind the things of this world is truly only possible by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit's leading us to leave behind our livelihood 
and even our families for the sake of the gospel is a leap. It is a leap of faith. And faith is only given and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And this is not to say that these things that are left behind are not important. Our jobs, our work, this is a blessing and a gift from God. Marriage, indeed, is a gift from God and a blessing given all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Marriage is good. Because God said it is not good for man to be alone. And so God made it good by giving Adam a partner, a companion, somebody to help him through this life. Yes, this is not to say that marriage is not good. It's just to say that marriage, even as a blessing from God, is only a worldly gift. And so marriage is a blessing from God. Our fathers and mothers also are blessings from God. They should be honored and respected, just as we would honor and show love to our Heavenly Father. But that just highlights the point, doesn't it? The importance and even the godliness of these worldly things highlights the urgency of the Gospel's call. Sometimes, to leave something behind to leave, leave behind God's first article gifts, it is necessary to embrace, to fully embrace and receive his second article gifts, the gifts of life and salvation. You see, the gospel is not a game which you can choose whether or not you wish to play. And therefore, preaching is not a hobby. It is not an art or a craft. It is not something subjective to the hearer, whether they liked it or not. It is not entertainment, nor is preaching just for the sake of education. Preaching is a matter of life and death. Listen to the preaching in our readings today. Nineveh will be overthrown. Or as Paul writes, this present world is passing away. Or in the words of Jesus, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You hear the urgency in these voices. The gospel is not something that can wait until later. For no one knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man will come again. Just as it is urgent that God calls Jonah to preach, it is also urgent that we hear this proclamation, repent and believe in the gospel. And so it is in this spirit that Paul says, husbands should live as though they had no wives, that those who do business with the world should act as though they had no dealings with it. Jonah, Paul, and Jesus are all calling us to an urgent repentance, for the time is fulfilled. For those who have forsaken their faith or become complacent in it, who have detached themselves from the things of God and attached themselves to the things of this world, there is urgency in our call to be fishers of men, to bring such people back by urgently telling them Christ is surely coming. Of that there can be no doubt. The appointed time has grown very short. Come back. Turn away. Turn back to the Lord, and he will turn favorably to you. Jesus is the embodiment of God's urgency. God has turned his wrath away from the Ninevites, and he has poured it out on his own son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus, God gives sons and brothers and fishermen a new purpose and calling. In Jesus, we receive a vocation that rises to the urgency of this moment. It was with urgency that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem, knowing what had to be done. It was with urgency that Jesus became the Jesus that we need. 
and not necessarily the Jesus that we might want, in order to go to the cross and die our death. And then it was with urgency that Jesus hung his head and said, It is finished, as he breathed his last breath. It is finished. It is complete. The time has been fulfilled. And on that cross, Jesus died for the sins of Nineveh. On that cross, Jesus died for you and for me. So that all who believe in him, John says, may not perish, but have eternal life. They will not die. They will live. You see, this preaching of the gospel, these matters of faith are matters of life and death. For fishermen, their job is death. For those who fish, for those fish who are caught in the nets, their time is short and their end is coming. Whether those fish are sautéed, baked, fried, or blackened, their end is the same. All those fish that are caught in those nets will die. But the fate of the fisher of the fish that are caught by the fishers of men, when they cast their net, it is in order to give life. The preaching of an urgent gospel is the preaching of life and immortality. Preaching the gospel of God sends out a net. It casts out a net that rescues from death and destruction. A death, a, a net that offers life and salvation. Yes, when Jesus calls his disciples to be fishers of men, he is telling them to cast their nets wide and to cast their nets urgently. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Yes, destruction is coming. The end of the world as we know it will come. But thanks be to God that those who are caught in this net of the gospel, in this urgent gospel, indeed, they will be spared. They will be saved. God will relent of this disaster for those who are caught in the net of his church. For those who are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Christ calls them his own. Urgently, Christ has called you. Christ has forgiven you. Christ has given you these gifts of life and salvation. And so Christ also calls us to cast our nets wide, to seek those who are lost, to seek those who have wandered from the faith, or become complacent in this Christian faith. To seek those whose faith is in danger. And to say, with urgency, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, urgent as it may be. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.